think this might have been one of the most devastating news stories for a lot of people out there. Mm. Goodbye to custom bundles, how Amazon's new rules could tank your Q4. So Amazon's latest update to its bundling policy, which went in effect immediately on October 14th when they announced this, has made it much harder for sellers to create custom bundles. The changes initially affecting grocery, pet products, baby products, and health and beauty products, so really focusing on consumables, means sellers can no longer mix products from different brands. This hits hard, mm. especially for those who built businesses on creative bundling strategies. So a couple things to note on this. Again, grocery, pet, baby, health and beauty categories is what it's on right now. Um, but what's really scary for people is that they plan to start enforcing this in late Q4 and give everyone a 30-day notice, which could mean that people's bundles start getting taken down right before Christmas. Hopefully yep. after, uh, but uh, really devastating news for a lot of people. Yeah, hopefully they at least let people sell through what they have. Exactly what I was thinking, yeah. Yeah, it kind of sounds like the listings are just, you're going to have 30-day notice, and then the listings are going down, essentially. Now, with the way Amazon usually handles things, I could see the notice kind of coming and then your listings going down immediately. We'll have to see. But I just hope that it's after Q4, after Christmas, that so people can sell through their bundles. Yeah. yeah. You know, one of the things that I've always seen is that Amazon likes to do a swipe kind of right at the beginning of Q4 and clean some, like they try to do a clean house, I feel like, and they go through sweep take down a bunch of listings and make sure that they're kind of in a better spot for Q4. And I don't, this, this seems like one of those things where they'll be doing it, I think earlier than, than later. Yeah. It, it's hard to say because it does specifically say in the notice that it will be, they will start enforcement in late Q4. So to me, late Q4 means December. Yeah. It uh, yeah. doesn't necessarily mean, it could mean end of November as well. And then give you a 30 day notice. I wonder if it, I would, I would, so I can see two scenarios here. One, they don't want to go through all the issues of like banning a whole bunch of listings right during that time. But two, which would mean they would do it later, right? After their busy season. But mm -hmm. if they need the space in FBA facilities, I can see them definitely doing it earlier and saying, hey, that's it. Do a, uh, a uh, removal order, you're done. Perhaps, even if they took all the bundles down, like right now, you're going to have a, an appeal period. Mm -hmm. And then after that appeal period, you're going to have a period before they force removal of those items. So that's going to put them at least into December. Fair anyways. Point. Yeah. yeah, I think it'll be later. I think it'll be mostly next year. Yeah, that's that's what I'm hoping. But I mean, even with that, it's a uh, pretty devastating news for a lot of people who yeah. have built their businesses around creating bundles and putting different products together. But it, so essentially in these categories, you can't create bundles anymore without the brand's permission and getting a UPC from the actual brand. Yeah. This, this definitely affects uh, wholesalers. Like it, it won't, I don't think it'll affect private label people because if they're the brand owner, they can create their own brands and that's uh, uh, bundles and that's no big deal. So that's this is targeted specifically, I think, at arbitrage sellers for the most part or uh, not quite arbitrage, but probably wholesale arbitrage, something like that. Basically, people that are flooding Amazon with completely brand new ASINs, but they are just these bundles, which is a genius way of of making money because you can get that placement right and make those sales. But yeah, I think a lot of people are just going to be SOL and have to figure out a new way to make money on Amazon. Yeah. And that's the important or the uh, unfortunate part because, mm -hmm. you know, I, I create bundles. I help a lot of people who have created bundles and things like that as well. And the people that I usually help or myself, we're focusing on creating bundles that improve the buyer experience. Yep. 
But as you just mentioned, there are people out there that just take, make, create a hundred listings of just random things and seeing what sticks. And then there's tons of dead listings, not adding any value and things like that. And, yep. and I think those kind of people really ruined it for the people who were trying to actually add value to the mm -hmm. customer. Age old story. That's that's how laws get made, right? No, no speeding because two people went wildly over the top and crashed into a bus stop or something like that or a house or whatever. Yeah. 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 Unfortunately, that's kind of the way everything goes in life. The the worst among us kind of set the rules <laughs> for all of us. Yeah. 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 What do you, uh, what do you guys think about, uh, do you think this will expand into other categories? Cause right now it's only in what those four categories at the moment. I think so. Absolutely. There is no question. Like it seems like Amazon's definitely moving in towards like trying to optimize every single part of their platform mm -hmm. to try and maximize the profit or just, you know, make sure that they're, as optimized as they can be as a trillion dollar company. And that means clamping down. And like you said, all those dead ASINs out there that might be getting a few sales a month or, you know, who knows what kind of visibility they're getting out there and they just want to clean everything up. Like it's definitely like a, a sweeping through the platform, get rid of all of the, we'll say excess waste that's just costing them in terms of data storage, uh, warehouse storage, warehouse fees, all that kind of stuff, get it all out of there. And, focus on they've always been focusing on the stuff that really really sells and you know these small bundles that don't really do too much but they are a nice little profit ad for some of those sellers out there too yeah i know some people who have built a really big business doing this like hundreds of thousands a year if not into the millions, millions. yeah yeah a year same and pretty much all of my bundles none of them are in these categories so it doesn't affect me yet and but also the bundles that i create I've always focused on building relationships with the brand. So while some of them might be under my brand, I have permission from all of these brands to be selling their products and creating bundles and stuff like that. So that really kind of goes back to what I've always said is relationships is kind of the name of the game in Amazon mm -hmm. and really life in general. If you've built relationships with some of these brands that you sell bundles for, you might be able to reach out to them, get a UPC from the actual brand and create the bundle under their brand name and keep selling it. True. Yeah. I mean, it will be interesting with other categories. I mean, like, for example, I bought this microphone as a bundle. So it came with like a pop filter and something else. And clearly it wasn't sold by the brand itself of the mm -hmm. microphone. Uh, it was a few years back, but you know, lo looking at some of the examples of on my screen over here of bundles that are in policy and out of policy, it seems like they're going after ones where like I could see like there's like leftovers and maybe potential compliance issues. Yeah. So like something that's ingestible or you're putting on skin. And so if and baby. All, all of those are ones that could be high liability, Very not so much with intellectual property, but with the potential for Amazon health safety. Not have, yeah, exactly. Health and safety and yeah. like having some sort of like concern over like, is this actually coming from the brand or are they dealing with counterfeits too? Which yeah. I guess you could argue that maybe there could be counterfeit, you know, microphones and stuff like that, but. These yeah. all seem more like it could be more of like a health and safety concern. It's probably multifaceted, but that could be one of the layers of why they picked these categories. That's a really good point. I think you're right. 